yes, people are creatures of habit, but people in their age and through the different periods and chapters of their life may also change certain things too. So you'll notice that in the 80s and the 90s, there was frequent mention of Johnny Depp's drug and alcohol habits, right? His trashing time. But then when he met Vanessa and they had kids, it seemed like he really got his head together and he sorted himself out for at least 10 years for the kids. That's what it looks like happened. Just from my lowly little vantage point over here as a normal pleb, it looks like he cleaned himself up for the kids. And he did that good solid for just over a decade. And then when he got together with Amber, that marked the period of his traditional family life with Vanessa and the kids that was over there and him and Amber are over here. So to him, this is the start of a new chapter. This is the start of a new like possibility of what's what's available to him. What what can he do in a day? What what things can he relax now to do? Because when you're at home with kids, there's certain things that you just can't do. But now that he has the new wife and he's just on his own in the house with the new wife, he can have another glass of wine if he wants to. He can have another, you know, try of something else in the back room if he wants to. He doesn't have a, a mother to answer to or he doesn't have the mother of his children to answer to and he doesn't have to be wary of the eyes of his children on him anymore. I think this might have been what started to happen when he was with Amber. But then Amber, I mean, yes, it's all very well for him. His kids are out of the picture now. Like he doesn't see them so much. But now is Amber there? And now Amber doesn't appreciate that he's decided, just decided, okay, I can relax now. I can have another glass of wine now. And, you know, she, she likes the idea of having him as her man. But she wants him as he usually is, not him high and drunk. And this part would explain why she got so frustrated, frustrated with him about drinking. You know, because he's left that whole family bit. But now he's not being family with her. He's being high times with her. But she can't control what he does when he's high times, right? And this might also explain why. When they went away to the Bahamas and they were hanging out. And then he got drunk and Amber called him a drunk to his kids. That was one of the first times his kids were becoming aware that, oh, their dad has this thing that he's dealing with. And Johnny was really defensive and angry about that. He said that Amber Heard was embarrassing him. She was embarrassing him? She was telling the truth. Throughout this whole trial, Johnny is always being told that he's telling the truth. He's just telling the truth. He's so honest. He's, he's so this. So her happening to mention or blurt out that these kids father probably has a bit of a problem with wine or something is an embarrassment to him. No, no, no. She's just telling the truth. He is an embarrassment to himself around his kids. He needs to take that responsibility that much. That's, that's not on her. It's on him. He's, he, he's had it come out. I don't know, man. These people. Pot calling kettles black. You know? It's weird. Okay, I found this. It makes me sad. <laughs> Exclusive Amber Heard's texts from 2014 detail alleged assault by Johnny Depp. He's done this many times. They're still not married yet, right? They haven't got married yet. E.T. has exclusively ob obtained never before seen text messages that a source says are between Amber Heard and a man purported to be Johnny Depp's assistant, Stephen Deuters. I'm assuming that's how you say his name. Stephen Deuters. And so that we don't have any absolute proof that this Stephen Deuters is uh, representing Johnny Depp here. Um, that date back to before the estranged couple was married. So this is before they're married and long before other alleged incidents. 
heard previously detailed in court records claiming that Depp was physically abusive with her. The text exchange, which the source says is from May 2014, begins with a message from Stephen, who is apologizing on behalf of a man purportedly to be Depp. I think he's just texted you. He's incredibly apologetic and knows that he has done wrong. Stephen's alleged text reads, he wants to get better now. He's been very explicit about that this morning. Feel like we're at a critical juncture. The recipient of the text, which E.T.'s source says is heard, responds, yes, but I don't know how to be around him after what he did to me yesterday. I don't know if I can stay with him. Stephen purportedly answers, he wants to see you so much, he's distraught. Te heard texts back, obviously he has no idea what he did or the extent that he did it. If someone was truly honest with him about how bad it really was, he'd be appalled. The guy was either high or in incredibly inebriated on alcohol. He shifted to that space where he's a different person. And he has missing time. He can't remember what he did. And so the next day when anybody reminds him or talks to him about it, he's just got to take their word for it that it happened because he can't remember. I'm sad that he doesn't have a better way to know the severity of his actions yesterday. This girl should have installed CCTV, man. She should have done that a long time ago. She continues, unfortunately for me, I remember in full detail everything that happened. How do we know she's lying, man? We don't know. Stephen allegedly reiterates that the man purported to be Deb has no recollection of the events that occurred. He doesn't remember, so of course he's going to say, I didn't do that. I didn't hit her, I wasn't physical with her, because he's no memory of that. He only gets physical after the point of no return of being inebriated on alcohol. He was appalled, Stephen writes. When I told him he kicked you, he cried. It was disgusting, and he knows it. He's a little lost boy and needs all the help he can get, Stephen allegedly continues. He's so very sorry as he should be. Yeah, but he keeps taking it out on the woman who's supposed to be closest to him, man. No. Heard response, he's done this many times before. Tokyo, the island, London, remember that? And I always stay. Always believe he's going to get better. And then every three or so months, I'm in the exact same position. E.T. has not able to independently verify the recipients of the messages or whether they had been edited and has reached out to Depp's rep and Deuters in regard to the text. Did these make it to the trial? Was it verified? There was one severe incident in December 2015 where, when I truly feared for my life. Heard also says that during the entirety of their relationship, Depp had been verbally and physically abusive to her. So Depp, Johnny Depp, probably knows he's familiar with the verbal abuse. But he's not familiar with the physical abuse because in his thinking mind, he has no memory of doing that. But maybe there's a whole section of him that's doing things that he's unaware of as happens with people who pass that point, right? Okay, so I'm looking at Insider now. See the URL there? Okay. Um, and now this is about what Johnny Depp said to a friend of theirs right after he'd got married to Amber Heard, right afterwards. So the headline is, moments after Johnny Depp and Amber Heard tied the knot, he said, we're married now. I can punch her in the face and no one, nobody can do anything about it. A former friend of hers testifies. Wow. Just wow. A former friend of Amber Heard's says Johnny Depp made a comment about physically assaulting his new wife immediately after Depp and Heard said, I do, at their 2015 Bahamas wedding. I was walking with Johnny and congratulating him that they pulled it off. The, I, the author I.O. Tillett Wright, 
who served as best man at the ceremony, testified Tuesday, adding that Depp then said, We're married now. I can punch her in the face and nobody can do anything about it. We're married now. I can punch her in the face and nobody can do anything about it. What the hell is this? What is he thinking? Where is his brain at? What's his internal dialogue? What's the internal dialogue going on inside his head? What are the thoughts going on inside his head? And how is he feeling about women and his future wife? If this is what comes out of his mouth directly after actually getting married, where is his head at? Now, I, I don't know, like, if this is, if you're a guy listening to this, how would you feel? If you heard this from a man marrying somebody close to you, like your sister or a daughter, how would you feel if you heard this coming from a guy who was marrying your sister or marrying your daughter? This should tell you everything. He said he was sometimes called in to help mediate intense fights between the couple and testified that Depp would get misogynistic and cruel under the influence of alcohol and cocaine. Tillett Wright said he had witnessed, heard and Depp argue with each other, but said he never saw either get physically violent with each other. Okay, that's pretty cool. But there's this misogyny here, man. The guy, Johnny Depp, he loves women, but at the same time, there's an, elephant, there's an element of them that he hates. Why does he, I mean, if he doesn't like the type of woman that Amber Heard is, why does he date her? Tillard Wright testified that Depp told him he had experienced jealousy and rage activities in previous relationships with Winona Ryder, Kate Moss, and Vanessa Paradis. Now, I've already detailed the part with Kate Moss. I do not have the parts about Winona Ryder and Vanessa Paradis, but apparently they're out there if you look. So this dude has a pattern of jealousy and rage activities. So basically, he's rageful, he's extremely violent to the surrounding environments and probably to things, furniture, appliances, whatever is in the room. He's not going to hurt the person, but there's going to be the storm going on around the place while he's angry. God, can you imagine living around that? Tillard Wright also said he had a lot of discussions with Depp about his fights with Heard and said the actor confided, confided in him about his childhood and fraught relationship with his mother and would often compare his mother and Heard. He said at one point something to the effect of, I already have a mom who is a bitch to me. I don't need another one in my life. Okay, see, here's my argument. If you don't need another one in your life, why do you go looking for them? I don't get this. Tillard Wright and Heard and Depp said Heard and Depp were frequently cruel to each other during their blowouts. Yes, I'm not denying this. It looks like they've both been pretty awful to each other. She called him old and he calls her soon to be ugly and talentless. And then they get really ugly with each other, he said. On the day of Heard and Depp's wedding, Tillett Wright, who helped photograph the nuptials, said he didn't remember Depp drinking before the ceremony. And this is an important thing, an important part to note, because basically he's saying that Johnny Depp said that. He said this. With a sober brain. He said this while he was sober. He said this while he, people hadn't seen him drinking before that. So if this is what someone's thinking when they're sober, how's their brain and what is their body, what is their whole person going to do when they're high? Or if they're past the point of no return, being inebriated on alcohol.
Okay, this is Insider and it's detailing um, till it writes about Johnny Depp getting misogynistic and cruel under the influence of alcohol and cocaine. One of Amber Heard's former friends who got to know Johnny Depp during the couple's relationship testified on Tuesday about how Depp would become very mean and very surly under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Imagine being around this person for a large portion of the day and whenever and he's on it quite frequently so he's but this means he's very mean and very surly frequently imagine being around this person here till it right who said he doesn't do illegal drugs or alcohol said he witnessed Depp get inebriated and take drugs including marijuana cocaine ecstasy and mushrooms during the time he knew the actor so Johnny's on pretty much everything Heard, on the other hand, according to Tillett Wright, would drink regularly, but he didn't see her drunk often. He remembered her doing ecstasy during a birthday once, but otherwise he didn't see her do drugs. Alcohol and cocaine brought out Depp's bad side. Cocaine and any kind of alcohol would bring out a very, very ugly side of him, Tillett Wright said of Depp. He would get very misogynistic and cruel and other things when he would take any kind of psychedelic like ecstasy or MDMA he would become paranoid when he drank alcohol he would become paranoid Tillett Wright said he would sometimes get called in to help the couple work through fights and remembers one in one instance in which Depp took him aside and then said some really nasty things about Heard things like all she's got is her looks. She has no talent. And when her tits start to sag and her face gets wrinkly, nobody's going to be interested in her for anything. So she better figure out another way to survive. Shit like that, Tillett Wright says. Jesus Christ. You know, this is really interesting, huh? You see Johnny, uh, uh, Johnny Depp acting. And he looks amazing and he looks suave and he's so talented. But that's on the big screen. That's when he's good. This is the other side of him. This is what he's really thinking about women. This, um, not about all women, but you can see where his mind is at. He views women as... See, I mean, read all this. Like, he's insulting this woman that he's married. You're supposed to marry people that you admire and that you love and that you, you see good things in. What does this have to say about how he's viewing the very woman he's married? Tillett Wright went on to say that when Mr. Depp would drink or take drugs, he would get very mean, very surly, very paranoid, extremely paranoid. He would weave these elaborate situations in which Amber was having affairs with every man she worked with, any woman she ever came into contact with, Tillett Wright said. Tillett Wright said Depp could be very demeaning. Well, that's nice. And would make jokes about Heard's appearance and her lack of talent as he perceived it. Oh my word, so hang on a sec. We heard throughout the whole trial of how Amber was being so cruel and mean to Johnny, insulting his talent, talking about him getting old and fat and everything. But it certainly seems like he's done enough of it himself before this. Tillett Wright said Depp would make comments about why Heard was actually famous and his impression was it was because of her looks and because he thought everyone wanted to have sex with her. So basically, Johnny Depp got married to her because she, he thinks she's hot, and he doesn't actually think she has much else going for her. Wow, dude. Wow. And it wasn't just Heard that drew his ire in these drunken states. He would insult his fans. Everybody is a nut for Johnny Depp. Everybody who's like starstruck, you need to be reading this. He would insult his fans. He would rail against his mother and his sisters. Pretty much anyone he felt had crossed him or would, would cross him, he became very nasty about. Tillett Wright also said that Depp confessed to experiencing jealousy in past relationships that led him to drink. So 
experiencing jealousy leads you to drink. Leads you to drink. This looks like he is not taking responsibility for his, his um, emotions. He's blaming it on the jealousy he's feeling, and that leads him to drink. Every time we feel jealous in our lives, every, every, every person out there, every time when we feel jealous or we have an unpleasant emotion, do we all douse it in alcohol? And a lot of rage activities. There's that rage activities mentioned again. Talat Wright said he never witnessed Depp physically abuse Heard. So he said Depp made a comment referencing domestic violence at the couple's wedding in 2015, and that was that. Yeah. Okay, so we haven't seen physical violence, but there's certainly a lot of verbal violence and a lot of emotional violence here. This dude is full of it. And here we have Insider again, URL up here. This one's interesting. So we, we, you heard this in the trial. Amber Heard calls Johnny Depp a sellout and wash up, watched up piece of SHIT. So basically, this is going to be the vicious fight where they insulted each other. And there was lots of insulting from, from Amber. But I'm going to focus on this part here. Yes, she swears. Yes, she insults him. But she's actually being really genuine here. What she's saying here, okay, I wish I hadn't bought into any of your lies, your S, your sober presence. She's saying, I bought into your sober presence. You were sober before and I bought into that and I thought that that's what you would always be. But you're not always that. And she's annoyed and angry that now at home with him, he's not the person that that she was hanging out with before. She's not the person that she fell in love with before. He's automatically changed. And that's why she's saying, talk about fake bill and goods. That's what she's talking about. She's being really, really honest here about her estimation of him. I don't think there's any lies here. This is her being purely emotional and purely dead honest about exactly how she feels. Your goodness. So there was some goodness to him, but it seems like that was a long time ago. Your sweetness, all the lies. So it, you know what? There's patterns coming out here again. Jennifer Gray said the same thing before. Some of his exes said the same thing before. He was super nice in the beginning. And then as they get together and he relaxes and they're, they're a formal uh, arrangement, he relaxes and he starts to let his bad side out, which is the drinking and doing the drugs. And then the personality that comes along with that high state and the, the state of inebriation. So basically, that's exactly what she's saying. She fell in love with him. He was presenting a certain image. But then once they were married, oh, he can... He can drop the facade now and he can just go on and do whatever he wants to do again. And she's just got to deal with it. That really, really corroborates with what he said, said about her earlier. As soon as he got married to her, he said, oh, now I can hit her and no one can stop me. No one can do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Not cool, man. I wish I hadn't bought into the months of you being you. So obviously the first few months were lovely. I wish I hadn't bought promises. So Johnny made some promises to her. I wish I hadn't thought I could have kids with you. So now she's probably thinking she cannot have kids with him because he presented something in the beginning that was actually false. You're a, f you're a kid yourself. I wish I hadn't bought into any of the lies you sold. So Johnny, it, it sounds, yeah, he's always being painted up as being the honest one. I don't know. After looking at all of this, I don't know, man. This lady just sounds like she's, she feels like she's been extremely shortchanged. Heard also testified that Depp physically assaulted her on occasions while accusing her of infidelity with men she worked with. It sounds a lot like what Jennifer Gray said before about him becoming all jealous. People are creatures of habit, man. Creatures of habit. Uh, this is a good point here. Laurel Anderson, a therapist who oversaw marriage counseling sessions with both Depp and Heard, offered testimony shown to jurors early in the trial that Depp and Heard partook in mutual abuse. So they've both been awful to each other. So we cannot just 
paint up Amber Heard as being the bad guy here. They've both been horrible to each other. 